Well, uh, I was reminded again uh, recently of uh, what Jesus did when there was a problem. The problem was that he had thousands of people ministering to, and the end was, uh, the day was coming to the end, and disciples came and said, well, what shall we do? Uh, how about if you let people go away to, to neighboring uh, villages and find the food for, for themselves? And Jesus said unique words, uh, and uh, I just uh, am amazed at that. He said, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And then we know what, what happened. They, they panicked. They, they didn't have enough bread. You know, they had five loads of bread and two fish. But, but they, they brought to Jesus, and amazing things happened. Jesus thanked them, thanked to God about, for them, and he passed to disciples. And when disciples were passing to, to people that were sitting on the grass or wherever, uh, bread multiplied, fish multiplied. Uh, and people were just satisfied. But the amazing thing, you give them something to eat. And uh, that's what Ted was doing to, to us and to, to many uh, frontline workers in, in Eastern Europe. I can speak for that. Uh, I just calculated that, that we are 10 pastors, uh, partners, 35 years. Uh, I was shocked, you know, 35 years ago, Gary Cox came to visit us for, for the first time in Novi Sad. And ever since that time, uh, we were receiving things that we passed to other people. And we were able, because of that, we were able to share the gospel. You know, when you give some, something to a needy person, that person will listen to you. And we always had opportunity to tell about Christ. And because of that, uh, things were developing, uh, people were coming to Christ, and, and it was just fantastic. Um, so thank you, Ten. Uh, used to be your evangelism, Ten. Thank you for your support all these years, giving us tools to reach people for Christ. So thank you. Um, uh, God is moving among people. Even though with the pandemic, uh, things were not the same uh, for some organizations. I, I hear that things happen even more, or churches happen even more than, than without pandemic. But most of that, what, what I understand is things did not happen so, so as, as we planned. But things are opening now in Europe, at least in Serbia, things are opening now and we are looking forward to the future. But one thing I know that in our organization with drug addicts, we, we never had so many, so many needs with uh, so many drug and alcohol addicts uh, as we had during pandemic. So uh, I know that Roma people are coming to Christ because of uh, 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 Christians, giving them something because they are always needy. And then they listen to the gospel and come into Christ. So Roma people um, are coming to Christ. Also, uh, I know that migrants that, that, that pass uh, through different countries, uh, many, well, maybe all of them went through Serbia, some stayed, but, but some went to other countries. And in, and in each country that there were uh, churches, individual Christians or organizations that, that try to reach these people uh, again by giving them something because they are very needy and also after that telling them about Christ giving them and tracks and I know some churches were established I know in Serbia some were established with with these migrants so God is working and especially uh, uh, the, there are a number of cases where we heard that, that, that they had a dream, that they had a dream of Jesus coming to them. Uh, and then somebody came, somebody showed up uh, and told them about Jesus. Oh, yeah, I, I see him in a dream. And it was fantastic. Now, the, the group that, that we really like, uh, uh, that uh, we minister and we love to see uh, coming to Christ are the addicts, drug addicts, alcoholics. And we, we know that, that, that every country has them. They are everywhere. So uh, working with them 
is something that that is challenging but but very very rewarding and we all know that in all the world there are church leaders that, that are leading few churches and we're drug addicts we're, we're nobody we we know that uh, there are uh, leaders of some organizations again being nobody being we, we call them lepers of today so everybody's staying away from them now they are leading others to christ so it is very encouraging to to see person that is good for nothing and, and now he's following christ uh what what uh, was amazing to me i was a few times in one of the conference in conference in sarajevo in bosnia once a year, uh, they have a conference for uh, drug addicts and alcoholics from, from former Yugoslavia. Uh, not many can come, but uh, when I was there a few times, there were around 100, 150 people. Uh, and I was so amazed. First time I seen so many uh, that are worshiping the Lord, raise, raising hands and, and speaking about him. And yet there were drug addicts alcoholics everybody stayed away from them so so encouraging mm -hmm. this uh, last year that they didn't have uh this conference because of pandemic uh this year they had but with way less people because they, they could uh, they could bring only 60 people to to this location because of the pandemic but still uh, those that they went there were so encouraged so mm -hmm. god is moving among the mm -hmm. addicts mm -hmm. Yes, uh, <clears throat> God is raising leaders uh, from this group of people. And uh, I will just uh, continue on what Danny just started also. It is our pleasure to be with you. Very sad that it's not in person, for sure. But uh, just this Sunday, a uh, day, couple of days ago, I was sitting in the front of the church. Uh, as you know, the church that we started, our church. And usually we sit in the front row. And... Uh, uh, I just decided something inside me said, go in the back seat. And I just got up and sat in the back seat and I sort of was sitting alone and observed. And uh, that's the moment that the Lord really spoke to me. And these are the moments that uh, keep us going as we have been serving for, as Danny mentioned, over 35 years. I sat there and there was a pastor who was speaking, of, you know, one of the, one of the guys who was a, uh, who was an addict and uh, accepted Christ. And he was now preaching in our church. He is pastoring another church in our city. And I could see his wife sitting in the front row who was also a drug addict. And then I saw a guy playing a guitar in the worship team and I remember him being with us. I never thought he would ever finish the program. He did not look very promising. But these are the surprises that we get from these guys. You never know what will turn up. And uh, there he was worshiping the Lord. And then his wife, also an ex-drug addict, got up and shared in front of the whole church what the Lord has been speaking to her. She had a word of knowledge to share with the congregation. And then there was a collection and there was a, a guy going around, you know, collecting uh, collecting the gifts and also 18 years on heroin and now cannot stand still and just dancing with the song praising god and i just sat there and then i looked at all these guys in front of me 30 young men that uh, are in the program now and it's hard to see it when it's thrown over your face and it's not bad to take a back seat sometimes and look in wonder and say, look what God is doing. So this is, um, many of you know the story. We started churches, raised leaders, but this is something that we are raising leaders now. And we hope that there's going to be thousands of them. And there'll be many centers in Serbia. And why not? These guys are on fire. That's what they want to do. Because they want to invest their life. The life that they ruined, they want to invest it in eternity. So the first picture, I think it's right there. This is the, the latest, just the group that we have now. And as you can imagine, the group changes. Some come and then they leave uh, and new ones come. 
so the numbers are big and uh, I can just back, you, you can take the picture off if you want uh, so that I can, can, you can, I can have your attention. Uh, each one of these faces have a story. They're not just numbers. And I know many times we talk, you know, there's another person coming tomorrow and uh, yeah, we're just thinking, okay, it's a person. But when we sit down and talk to this new individual that wants to come in and we hear their story, many of the times, it's not just a matter do they come in. You just want to take them home because there is this broken life that they're saying, I need help. And we know where the help is. And we're so grateful to have the privilege to have a place where to welcome them and to have them and to share life with them. It's not the center, it's a family. We have meals together, you will see. We have so many pictures that we could share, but we can, we sit down and you will see on the picture now that we sit down and we eat together, we celebrate, we celebrate that this was a, a, a Christmas time. We celebrate together and we worship together and their faces, each one of them would say, this is the first time I'm sober during this period of, of, the, of the year. I am alive. I am alive. And I will pick a couple of guys to share the story. We will have a, we will have a, a baptism next Sunday. But the last baptism, here is the name. His name is Sergeant. And I remember driving him with Danny to a center. We picked him up from the, from the bus. We took him to the, to the center. And I mean, in the little bit of time that we had, we looked at each other then after that and thought, my goodness, if this guy makes it, that would be a miracle. Like on his own, being on drugs, having no friends, even the dog didn't want him anymore. But the friend consistently kept telling him, the one that already finished the program and was now collecting offering in the church, he says, come, come, come. And he came. And slowly as you can imagine, the transformation comes. Nobody can do this. There is, no, there is no psychiatric ward, there is no doctor, there is no pill. And I recently, one of the leaders of the doctor, one of the doctors in charge of the psychiatric ward said, we have been doing this for years, trying to help the addicts and we have zero success. And look at you. Yes, that you can go back to that picture. This is after the baptism. This is Sergeant after he was baptized with the great big smile. By the way, he had no teeth when he came. So this is what we do for the guys. They come toothless and they come skinny. They live with a problem with weight and they have a great big smile because they get new teeth as a gift. So amazing. This dream of this guy is he's looking at the map, looking at cities with no church and center and praying. And he is like, like a man that's ready to run and we're saying not yet, not yet, ready to go. Because in the right time, he is ready as well as many others to go and start, not just a new center, but the new church. This tomorrow, um, on this Sunday in the morning, we will have another baptism on the River Daniel. Two of the guys will be baptized or three, three of the guys will be baptized from the center plus others. But I would share with you about Rade. You will see his picture. Uh, Rade was homeless. He came to us. Eric, homeless. A person that you really avoid on a street. And uh, miraculously, he came to us. And of course, as the Bible says, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. Uh, I was naked and you didn't clothe me. All we did is we invited him in. We welcomed him in. Really didn't have much hope, but we were doing the right thing, a biblical thing to do. And we are so glad we did. He had severe problems with his health, muscular dystrophy took some of the movements of his body. We, had, we took pity on him. Rade today, finish the program. He is a transformed man. When you look at him now, he looks like a professor. He looks like a very influential guy. So it was our pleasure to invest into him. And this is the picture that I just sort of took an aside. 
something that the guys asked us to do, which we did not have before. A number of them came and said, you guys, Vera, Danny, you led so many people to Christ. How did you do it? We want to learn. We want to learn how to share our faith. Because when they go back to their city, when they go back to their family, they have a story. They have a life transformation, but they don't know how to share it with others. So this is what we did. We had a little bit of a, a number of weeks we got together and group of them, there was, I think, 12 of them there that wanted to learn how to share their faith. And then we had them practice. And uh, this is Radha, he got up and this is, this is how I would do it. And he did amazingly well. He sort of uh, shared the bridge illustration. How do you reach, how, where do you start? How do you lead the conversation? How do you do it with somebody that doesn't know Christ at all? Somebody that's religious, somebody that's been around for a while and doesn't have a relationship with Christ. So it was a very moving moment for me and for us. Uh, so I want to say that this is what excites us the most lately. We see the Lord raising leaders. Dear friends, there is nothing like seeing a person come to Christ. And we don't take it for granted. I thank God for every person that said yes to Christ because of my investment of time because of our investment of time and even though it's inconvenient so many times and it takes a lot of time after a person says yes then it means you got to be involved in their life but to see a person that you led to christ now lead others to christ it is amazing i was reminded of that even nesha when you showed nexus nesha came from our church he is the one that uh, made a serious commitment for the Lord there. And to see him being used by God and having dreams and plans, uh, I led his wife to the Lord. There they are serving the Lord in this city and doing great things. Our heart is full, not only them. And the ripple effect of each life is amazing. We never, never know. So we can say, that in this last 35 years, we have lived a full and rich life. And I want to thank you for believing in us. I want to thank you for investing because the ripple effect, we just never know. As the brother from Macedonia shared, some couple came, some people came, they started something and look what's happening now. We just can't imagine what the Lord will do. I say to the guys sometimes, this is how I want to finish my life. I can see myself old, laying on a couch, hardly being able to hear. And I want you to come and tell me, we have opened another center and another church. That would excite me. That's how I want to finish my life. That's how I want to end. Uh, well done. And yes, many people start, but we want to finish well. I want to thank you for helping us through the process, you know, sometimes uh, when nothing happens, it is the hardest thing to do, to continue faithfully, one foot in front of the other, and just keep on going and keep on believing. The Lord's done amazing things just because we stayed. There were many temptations, as you know, I sometimes share that, many temptations. And there were many impossibilities. So what the Lord is doing in Balkans, even through the wars, even through the pandemic, even through all kinds of other things, the church is being built and nothing can stop that. I was reminded of the ministry that the Lord allowed us to do for almost 12 years, and that is hospice. And I remember meeting Marinella at one of the conferences. I was amazed at what she does. And I thought, surely God can use our story We've been through cancer. We know what it feels like. I wish we can do that. And then one little step of faith led to a thousand steps that the Lord did. This is the motto that we always had. We make one step of faith. And we did. And hundreds and hundreds of people that were dying were able to hear about the Lord. So 
it is amazing what the Lord keeps doing and we're excited because we see him at work. I'm reminded again, and I wanna share that with you. There is no greater privilege than to invest our lives in people. At the end of the day, and days are going very fast. Almost every day I say to Danny, do you remember, Bob? do you know how long ago that was? I can't believe it, five years, 10 years, and I'm sure you're the same. Things go by so fast. Life goes by so fast. The moment comes, we take nothing with us. One thing remains, and that is the souls. I'm excited over each one that I was able to touch, that we were able to touch. We're so encouraged. I forgot the main thing. When I looked at my Sunday evening in the back seat, I saw the pastor of our church. Remember, Danny was pastoring the church for so many years. The moment came that he passed it on to Vera. And uh, he stood there and also was talking. And God reminded me, he too was an addict. He came as a young man with the black leather jacket, with the funny looking hair, with things sticking out of his ears and with a bad attitude and with a miserable face angry at the whole world that's changed he now is a pastor a very capable one with the knowledge with the vision with spirit-filled life that keeps gathering many that keeps preaching the gospel the lord raises leaders from the ones that we could hardly ever believe and we can we think they're the last ones that God can use. What a joy it is. Yes, to take the back seat or even to sit behind the screen as you are today and say, boy, we serve a big God. Look what he has done. Be encouraged, my sister and my brother. The Lord's eye is upon you. The Lord's eye is upon those that we serve. And the puzzle will be put together. To him be the glory as he uses our simple lives to do great things for the kingdom. Thank you for partnering with us. And it's amazing what's going to happen next. We just don't know. But it's good to look back and say, thank you. You have done great things. Thank you so much. And may God bless you as you continue to serve him. I will now ask uh that uh, sorry i would just ask hazel that she would pray at the end thank you